Hi everyone. I'm going to share with you a conversation that took place this morning. It's June 3rd in the year 2020. The conversation happened about 3.30 in the morning. It was a conversation with the being I've come to know as one. What I would like to do is read it first and then when I'm finished reading uh, to share with you some of what came through with it. I'm not sure that um, full comprehension is going to happen from the words. Um, this was a rather long conversation, about an hour and a half, um, and there was a lot of pauses and pictures and images and emotions that came with it that I'll share with you once I've read it. So um, I'll go ahead and start. I'll, um, here we go. You face now some of the more frightening aspects brought to light by this awakening. These emerge now as a rapid fire, able to be seen in reports from seemingly everywhere where you're where you'll find yourselves densely populated these pockets of violence are inevitable explosions of a suppressed malfunctioning and undersupplied system it is no longer working how appropriate that the place where its lawlessness is being exposed centers on money and commerce. And I'll just say something here that this is a um, reference to and what I saw with those words were the ATMs and the um, high-end department stores that were being vandalized and looted. I'll continue. The reaction calls your attention to things that both have nothing to do with the spark that ignited it and at the same time everything to do with the disproportionate amount of color represented in the more desperate portion of society. Your world has asked a large portion of itself to survive in squalor without justification or reason. Your world has ignored for far too long systemic sickness. For who can be asked to call off the riots? Is there a single element? a person, a group. There is a single condition perhaps, yet the individual occurrences of it are far too many to blame or even identify. The condition is slavery. It has held itself under an illusion of function. Society has within the same geographic location housed the more opulent expression of its wealth and the most oppressed, poor, and underprivileged members of itself. In broad daylight, these polar opposite extreme depictions have been quietly sitting, blatant expressions of malfunction. Now, in a mass movement to dismantle them all, it draws your attention. You are horrified. You are terrified in some cases, cases, fearful the violence will reach your door. This is unlikely for although there is extreme levels of violence or there are extreme levels of violence everywhere it seems, its purpose is not aimed at harming members of its own society. Its purpose is to point to and ravage and destroy the inequality itself. What has become a common element in this violent response is destruction of money machines. 
These are seemingly magic contrivances that dispense wealth if you have the right number. These are being destroyed. The one key element that has maintained your slavery status has been your dependence on money. Money has become a lifetime focus for some and you count those as among the most powerful in your world. Money is being exposed and access to it now gained via violent action. This rather than privilege or status or ability to enter a certain class of society that produces more from its brain than it does from its labor. Money. It is being exposed as the key to your problem. It is being exposed now in a method seen by that portion of society unoppressed as most vile and frightening. Yet what other option is there? Have grievances been met with change when aired in air-conditioned boardrooms by finely dressed people of color? Have changes to society's base structure been accomplished in prior generations and after prior protests on a smaller, more isolated scale? No, they have not. And like a cancer that once emerges in a body as an isolated individual cyst is removed and then considered, quote, cured, this illness has reemerged and now spread everywhere. Solutions to this eruption will not be found in, quote, cutting out or removing the problem. It cannot be located, and even if it were possible to locate all instances of it, there is no life-saving, humane method available to you to remove it. The society reports, resorts, I'm sorry, Society resorts to violence on every level now to quell the tide a bit and give it time to think. It is running out of control and its inherent lie is being exposed at every turn. The answer is not simple when the quote problem is not the current exposure of violence but the violence beneath it. This is the more sinister of the two. It is blatant, widespread, and so illogical as to be portrayed as something to lust for rather than something that is reasonably attainable. Violence is your only resort. It occurs because of the Great Awakening. It occurs for those less eloquent and privileged. It has become their platform and they have paid for this stage themselves through lifetimes of oppression, inequality, and unjust systems. They've been asked to watch each other die due to lack. This lack is not due to the unavailability of product or process, but the inability to purchase either. What lies at the basis of your slavery is money and right now that fact is being screamed out at a confused and frightened world. There are several things to address in this crisis simultaneously and of equal importance so they can be healed. There are lives to protect. There are elements sections and neighborhoods to support. There is an inherent violence lying deep within law enforcement that is supplied with fear and supports fear's expression through brutality and weapons. There is the lack of opportunity to change a system built on the backs of the underprivileged and now, having reached beyond those backs to the next highest on the rung of poverty, the so-called middle class. 
there is the class structure itself. There is the notion of lack, of earn, of rights, and of worth. These are systemic issues brought to light by the symptom of rioting, looting, and violence to objects and not necessarily people unless they get in the way. It makes sense to stop the violence, yet it will not stop the underlying issue and that until that is addressed. The world watches and waits now to see what will be done. What happens next will not be overnight or achieved in a single move. There are steps. These must be taken. You will see some retreats and some missteps yet, and here is the point of mentioning this at all, like a cancer whose first identifying instance was a lump that was quickly removed and thus, quote, cured. The body will reproduce another one unless continuing care and healing and preventative modalities are then applied as well and consistently evaluated and monitored. All of these things happen now. You are witnessing the dismantling of a violent system being exposed by these nightly acts of violence against an unjust society. You are meant to be afraid, being told they are coming for you next. This is intentional. For make no mistake about this, the controllers are at this moment still plotting and orchestrating new techniques to keep their systems running. Remember what has been said. They will have to be starved out or removed, much like a cancer cell, and will not go on their own. So get this violence under control, yes, of course it's necessary. Then realize that it erupts now as a result of a more sinister force. This force does not care about the damage done, only about the maintenance, maintenance of service to its own ends. Those ends have nothing to do with your well-being. The Great Awakening has reached your door. Do not be afraid. Maintain a steady flow of force for peace, prosperity, and love for all concerned. Hold your focus, dear human, on every supportive and beneficial outcome you can imagine. Your power is held in your intent. United now in the need for a solution, it is within your power to create one, one that is beautiful beyond measure. You'll see, dear human, you'll see. What is before you now is astounding. That is all. So that's it. Uh, that's what I heard this morning. While I was hearing it, I was seeing played out the um, oppression, not only in the United States, but all over the world, the squalor, the unjust, um, living conditions for people, people of color primarily, not always, but historically, I saw it, I saw it globally, I saw it historically, it's always been there. And, and I saw it as as evidence for a system that isn't, that isn't broken. It's doing exactly what the designers of the system intended it to do. 
And that's the point. The point is that the, that the people, that humanity has reached, I don't know what you want to call it, a level, a frequency, a vibe, uh, um, that will not allow this to go on. It's starting here and now with George Floyd in the United States, but it's not only existing here, it's existed forever. And so what we're seeing is, is a consequence of our eyes being open now to what it is, of our, of our, our awareness of each other as equal to each other. We've accepted it. I'm a white woman in America, one of the more priv privileged due to my color. I've ignored it. I've ignored that fact. I've accepted the inconsistencies. I haven't seen the brutality. And what was shown to me this morning was that, yes, we all saw George murdered on a street corner in Minneapolis, Minnesota. But we knew and have known for a very long time that that happens daily all over the world. And it's no less an act of violence that people are starving because there isn't enough food or water or, or money to buy it if you're in Western society. than what we saw happen to George. It's, it's just as, as violent. And it's our responsibility and we see it now. We can see it with what happened. And so I guess what I wanted to say is that what I also saw was that there is a lot of polarization coming out now and blame. It's this group, it's that group. I have sons in two cities in this country and they both are saying very similar things to me about what they see on the streets of their cities. They see some of it being done by young white kids who are all revved up because there seems to be this acceptance of violence now. This is a cool thing to do. Um, there are some other white supremacist groups. There are um, there's Antifa, there are a lot more of quiet protesters holding peace vigils, having conversations, helping each other, collecting money for bail when they get arrested because they know they're going to be arrested. The stories that you're hearing online about how terrible it is that people are giving money to bail out Antifa members may be true in some cases, but it's not every case. We cannot rely on, on the media that we're listening to, to be giving us the whole story. The story I saw this morning and the story I'm hearing from my own two, two of my children tells me that this is a much more aware populace than the media is, is telling you. It's not as simple as listening to this pundit or, or hating the president or believing in Q or whatever your thing is. And we all have our thing and we all can only in, absorb so much information right now. And what I was left with at the end of it all was that there's no reason to be afraid. There's every reason to be excited that it's happening. That we are in the midst 
of systemic change and the way that we can support that change is energetically with our intent, with our thoughts, with holding a place, a place where justice and, and universal acceptance and opportunity and promise is possible. We can hold that vision. We can also participate locally, wherever you are, wherever you are, find some place and some way to participate in this change because it's happening now in our lifetimes. It's going to change. I don't know what it looks like. I didn't see a conclusion to this morning's conversation. I didn't see the only conclusion I saw was that it will we will have a new world. I don't know what it's going to look like along the way to it. But I do know that we're all creating it right now and we can't look aside anymore. We can't rest wherever we are. Whether it's touching us or not, whether it's in our neighborhoods or not, we can't act like it doesn't affect us because it affects every one of us. And the more we can support it with our heart space and our, and our light, the faster the answers will come and they'll come from all of us. I don't have the answer. I don't think there is a person to blame. But I felt that it was necessary to share this verbally right away. Because this is a 60,000 foot view of what on the ground can look like black against white, rich against poor, police against citizens, governments against um, against whatever they decide to be against and it's much deeper than it goes much deeper than any of that and for that reason and with that knowledge we can participate we can participate with our hearts and our intents and and you know and our wallets if we can afford to give money to some of these causes to enact legislation to change things because money is still part of it and so are we and I'm sorry I'm not meaning to stand on a soapbox I just wanted to share the visions that came through um, were very powerful this is a world issue and we are the members of that world so that's it. I, I hope I didn't offend anyone. I, I just wanted to share this with you all. I love you all. Namaste.